Hi, I'm Andrew Eggleton, and uh, I'm very humbled to be on the online prosperity show uh, speaking about presenting. And I guess my gift is being able to align people with their true selves and being authentic on stage or on camera so they truly connect with their audience. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today we've brought you the presenting coach himself, Andrew. Andrew, how are you doing, my man? I'm very, very good on a hot, humid Melbourne day. And thank you for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know what they say about Melbourne weather. If you just wait a minute, it will be something different. So hopefully by the end of this video, you will be nice and cool and, um, you know, uh, more relaxed. But, um, you know, for the audience out there, you might be well aware that it is not a secret anymore that um, the use of video in your content marketing is on the rise. You know, uh, with the advent of our mobile phones, everybody else is consuming content, uh, you know, through video. And it's certainly no longer a tactic that you need to take lightly. So sometimes, um, you know, fear comes in the way. And then it stops us dead in our tracks to create and relate to our audience. And we wouldn't know how to go past it or to actually present ourselves in a unique and authentic way. And that's the reason why we've brought in the presenter coach himself, Andrew, who's well-versed in front and behind the camera. And he will actually hold your hand with his eight-week program that is designed you know, to bring out the best of you or in you and taking your passion in your chosen career to a whole new level um, using present presenting tactics and also the power of video. Now, I'm not sure if I botched that introduction there, <laughs> Andrew. Um, I mean, it is one of those things when somebody comes um, highly decorated as yourself, I'll try to pre bring out a whole lot of stuff, but I know you will help us with the value that um, you know, your, your program does uh, bring up. Now tell us a little bit about what you actually do, Andrew, and how you help, um, you know, people overcome, you know, fear of presenting or fear of being in front of a camera. Question and one that in the last 12 months has changed a lot. When I started this, um, when I started coaching this presenting area, I was really coaching presenting. It was, it felt black and white to me. I, you walk in the door, I make you a better presenter, you're more relaxed, more authentic, and then you walk back out again. Then last year, I started to dig a lot deeper in this, and this idea that I had in my 20s that I could reshape the way people communicated and presented started to really show itself. And that was in my 20s when I had this idea. In my 30s, I was working full-time as a presenter, an actor, and TV producer. And what was happening when I was filming was I, I felt the sense of un, being unsatisfied when I was working. I wanted to give the audience more instead of being the camera on, hey, I'm Andrew Eggleton and the smile and then you finish and you go back to whatever you're doing and um, talking with crew. And I always felt like I was not selling myself short. I was... I felt in some way I was always ripping my audience off and they were going to judge me. And if they were going to judge me, I wanted them to have the whole package for them to do that by. So something that has happened in the last 12 months is I've really recognized I have a talent for help, helping people become congruent with their, their own unique self and, and, helping to them find their own gift and bring that out when they're on camera. Um, essentially what I do is I guide them to a place where they can feel what it's like. It's got nothing to do with how you look. And this is why I really don't like recording people in my workshops and then sending them out with a DVD because you go home and you, you critique yourself. And it's not about that. It's a feeling. Once they've felt that feeling, they will want to find that every time again. They will search for that feeling every single time they present because you can't go back. Does that, does that make sense? Well, absolutely, yes. Um, because what, what you're talking about is whenever somebody is faced with having to present in front of an audience, they 
you know, they'd rather the ad opens and then, you mm-hmm. know, they, they, the, the ad sucks them in and instead of yeah. them continuously present. So you, you really liberate them and give them, you know, the, the tools and the way how to actually, you know, present and present, um, you know, their authentic self as, as yes. you would have, you know, yes. as they would have wanted to be. Yeah. Okay. And, and when you, when you feel that power, when you, when you feel that energy, when you feel that rawness and that ability to be vulnerable in that moment and work moment to moment with your, with your audience or on camera, there's a magic in that that your audience will feel. Not only do you feel it, which is the, the, it's, it's hard if you, if you haven't been there and you haven't felt it, it's hard to explain. But you, I know when people are feeling it, are in the zone because I see their light come on. I see it. I see it happen. I see their eyes open. I, I can. I can see that they lose themselves. And then next, when they finish, I'm like, "How did that feel?" And they're like, "Whoa, I've never felt like that before." It's almost like in, being introduced to your real self on camera. Because I'm not a. I'm not a technical guy. I can teach technical, but I don't enjoy teaching technical, because for me, this. I don't want to see more of that in life. There's like a desire right now for people to wanting to be shifted, their, their minds and hearts shifted when someone's speaking to them. And there's a shortage of supply of presenters who have an ability to do that. You know, we don't need, in my opinion, we don't need more people who are just talking and using technical tools to manipulate. We're wanting true connection. When you're standing on stage and I, people go, I can see Andrew, I can feel Andrew, I, can, I know what is, there's, there's this feeling of working moment to moment. And if I have any masks up when I'm working, that's blocking that energy from, that, from the audience. Absolutely. Well, obviously, when you're talking to people, you need that sort of connection, you need that engagement, um, you know, from the audience. So basically, what you're teaching people is to be who they are, in their vulnerability so that their message actually attracts and um, appeals to the um, emotion rather than the logical yes. aspect of the person's totally. brain. Because our brains, as, we, as far as we would like to think we are advanced, but our brains do not really process logic as much as they process emotion. So I can imagine mm. what it is that you would be teaching the people to actually connect and, um, and relate to an audience that's willing and able to understand, you know, maybe their worldview and understand their message out there. So pretty, pretty, pretty deep stuff going on there. So how, how did you, I mean, obviously you, you did say you were working behind the, um, you know, the camera and in front of the camera. Um, is, the, is it something that, you know, you felt like um, you were not being authentic yourself in front of camera and you thought that's exactly what this industry standard was like because for one to come to a place of knowing and understanding that this is needed there had to be a shift in inside of yourself do you take us back to that moment what was actually happening when did you feel like you know this could be something that the market needed so you know it, it wasn't what the market needed it's what i wanted to gift right and leave a legacy as like i i didn't tap into um how's that how's our internet they were in australia so i understand our internet's pretty bad um i didn't look at a market and go okay we need more authentic speakers this was just what i felt that my gift was and i right. wanted to be able to to gift that to other people because I understand the, the absolute joy that it brings you when you start, when you start becoming congruent when you're on stage and on, and on camera. It was the way I teach is due to all of my experiences. Like I, I've traveled all over the world being coached by presenters and I, I swear to God, every single time I felt very unsatisfied in the way that I was being coached. I kind of, you know, when you're, you're sitting in, the, in that room, and, and, and I, I know this doesn't sound very humble, but you're kind of going, I'm better than this teacher. I know more than this teacher. And there's a sense of, I might not be as good a presenter right now, but 
I just have this, this sense, I have this, this feeling that I can be a lot better than this and take this a lot further. So I'm going to let you on a little secret that happened just very recently. My idea of going on stage is being able to prepare, 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 and then I let it go. So I know where I'm going. I know what I want, what information I want to give over, but I try to surrender as much as I can that I'm letting the audience, this energy is moving like this. And it was only last Sunday that I managed in an hour's talk to stay in that 100% for the first time in my life, where I didn't get back onto my, into my head. When I felt the energy change in a room, I felt like I was ahead of what was happening. And I could feel that the audience was about to become detached from what I was talking about. And I had the ability to, instead of panic, shift into another story and keep them going before they felt that. Does that make sense? I know this sounds really woo-woo, man. I, I, I understand that. <laughs> it does make a lot of sense. Um, um, okay. I mean, obviously, is it something that it, it has to be felt for, for one to actually understand now they are in that zone? It's not something that you, cannot, you can impart um, onto somebody. They just can see it and feel it and yes. just enjoy it as it is happening. For what benefit is that? if you're able to channel that, um, you know, to your audience in, in, a, in, a, in a presentation or in a video? You're being the example of what you talk, what you speak of. You're being, by you being 100% you, well, as much as you can, you're giving the same permission to your audience and that's the best gift you can give anybody. So if you've got 300, if you've got 30, if you've got 10, 30, 300, 3,000, and your gift to them is, is enabling them to step into everything that they can be, allowing them to go, do you know what? For all your little imperfections, for everything that you are, I'm allowing you to be that because I'm, on this, I'm doing the same on stage. Does that, does that make sense? So the gift on, the, the gift on stage is I'm being the example on which of which I'm talking of. Right. So I'm not just, but my mouth is not moving. I'm also being that example. And the irony is not lost on me that that can be quite stressful when you're a presenting coach and you're on stage and you know, you, the irony is that you actually have to be really good and you have to be authentic because you're talking about authenticity. And sometimes that can really back me into a corner before I go on. I get nervous and I get anxious and I've discovered that the best talks that I do, and this is for the people who, are, who feel that they're shy or introverted or get the fears and they, and they start to shake. I've been doing this for 25 years and I still get nervous. I need the bathroom. I still get nervous. I feel anxious. Uh, my hands on, um, on Sunday, I couldn't even pour myself a drink because my hands were shaking because I apply this pressure to myself that I really need to sink into myself. Like I apply that, apply that to myself. The irony is if I'm speaking on authenticity and being presented, I need to be good at it. I need to be the example to show them. And for anyone who's nervous, I, I really feel that your best work comes from that place because you're not, if you over prepare, you're not listening to your audience. If you over prepare on video too, you're stuck in a way that might not be suitable for your energy in that moment. You know, your, your state of being. I know this gets woo woo, and I try, I try to balance it out with, with, with just normal shit, you know? F to but, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the best thing that, that that energy where you're kind of backed into a corner and you don't know what's going to happen on stage and you kind of don't know where it's going to go because you don't know what your audience needs quite yet, but you're prepared enough. That's where the magic happens. That's, that's where you get out of your own way and the magic happens. There's nothing worse for me watching someone on stage or on camera having a really predetermined way of how they're going to go because you're not listening. You're talking. This is all this working. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you've practiced in the mirror that when you're pointing to the future, you're looking over here using this arm. And then when you're talking about the past, you're looking over here and you go to this side of the stage. I mean, 
honestly shoot me in the face if I have to watch another presenter like that. I want to have my heart and my mind shifted. So then when I walk out of that room, I, don't, I might not remember anything they said, but I will remember them for months and years to come. Absolutely. That last point there, um, they say people never quite remember what you say to them, but they do remember how you made them feel. Mm -hmm. And you would appreciate that back in the time, you know, um, the only stages that were given um, were high ranking stages. So people had to over prepare and, you know, really, really over deliver. And, you know, there's usual uh, and generic um, you know, gestures, like you said, you know, move to the left when you want to say something and move to the right and then, you know, big, small and really bring in the audience with your hand gestures and movements of which nowadays people really just want to hear what's in it for them. None mm. of what, how you're presenting yourself and how you're not about to die on stage. And so I really, really appreciate that somebody has noticed that. And um, you also can appreciate that a lot of people would rather watch you live streaming or on video. How is it different presenting in real life and on video? Is it still the same mannerisms or tactics or do you have to undergo, you know, different sort of um, preparedness like you, you mentioned earlier on? So you mean like doing a face between the difference between a Facebook live and um, recording a video that you're going to, place up on youtube or something like that is, is uh, that absolutely that's what i meant yeah. so you know going live on facebook and also maybe just having a a, a pre-recorded video nice there's there's always this is a kind of difference for me one one first i just want to make this point that our imperfections are the window of which we let our audience in if you start out if you make if it's not perfect if you your imperfections are fine, especially, especially on a Facebook Live. Do you know what I mean? That you, you allow those things, allow the space, allow those imperfections to come through. It's okay if you stutter, if you, it's okay. So it's, you know, the difference for me is if I'm doing a video, I'm I'm way more clear. I'm way more focused. In here, I'm I'm speaking to one person at a time. You know, think of it like this. When you're doing a video, you've, I'm just going to use a nice round number. Instead of me ringing up 100 people at a time and getting, you know, 10, uh, 90 no's and, and 10 yeses or maybes, you're hitting 100 people at a time and 90 of those won't make it to the end. And then another five out of those 10 will make it to the end, but they're really not interested. Five people will go, oh, I'm interested, but I'm not quite ready. But that one person, that one person you spoke to specifically, you answered all their questions. You've got the answers to everything that they need right now to up-level and move into the next stage. That's what this is all about, isn't it? This is what video is about. And when if I'm shooting a video, I'm making sure that for, for me, I'm allowing myself to be more... I'm using timing. I am using tools and techniques more on that one. Okay, and, and the pre-recorded stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm letting my timing between the sentences, I'm letting my audience sit on a point. If I'm gonna make your point, like the windows of the imperfections of what, yeah, our imperfections are the window of which we let our audience in. I'll sit on that, I'll allow you to take that in, even write, write it down. And I continue. Whereas a Facebook Live is, for me, it's more playful. For, <laughs> Facebook Live is being more playful. It's, you know, you're, you're, one is you're repeating yourself too, because as people come on in the Facebook Live, you, you, know, have, to, you, have, to, yeah. you have to go, hey, John, by the way, this is what I'm talking about, and I've these two points, but now I'm just pulling you up to speed. You're kind of repeating yourself. And I just did this. I don't know if you saw the, the Facebook challenge I just did of um, this is hashtag this is me today, which was, man, it went crazy. It kind of caught me by surprise. But, and I'll, I'll run one again, of those again very soon in my, in my group. The, the, the key to that was you weren't allowed to change your state. 
So what happens when people want to do a video is that they want to be in the right headspace, right? You know, I want to look good. I want to be in the right headspace. But what we did over this 10-day period was you had to at, literally walk in the door at 2 o'clock every day. It was like you pick your phone up and you do a Facebook Live. If that means that you go, hi, hashtag this is me today. I'm Mandarin. And you know what? I actually can't be bothered doing this today. That's it. That's enough. But what happened by day 10 was it became this seamless, like literally you weren't thinking about it. Flicking up your screen, pushing live, hashtag this is me today, and you're off. And all of a sudden people were really getting into this amazing groove. Like people were dancing, people were twerking, people were crying, people were telling stories and laughing. It was amazing. And at the end of it, we'd all gone on this amazing journey and realizing that there is no right state. There is no right state. Just show the hell up. That is your state. Do you know what I mean? And if one person is on the day 10, I honestly, man, I was, I was in tears. I was sitting on my bed in tears, just thinking how amazing all these people's journey had been on. And even the ones who were super shy had got to this point where they were jumping online and, you know, make, it was, we were making each other's day. It was a beautiful journey. Don't change your state. Don't, changing your state is like another form of procrastination, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, I'm not in the right mood yet. I'm not in the right mood yet. I'm not going to do this. You know, I'll wait for tomorrow. Well, that mood doesn't come. Great stuff. So you take people also on an um, eight-week journey, um, you know, within, within you, the online course that you teach them. Just walk us through what people can anticipate um, if they do sign up to that eight-week uh, presentation course. Yes, yeah, sh- sure, man. I mean, the, the beauty of... The beauty of eight weeks is I, I, I really get to go through, I, I get to click through all the gears, you know what I mean? So there's always a few, ima- this is the cool part, if you imagine a graph, there's always this period of growth at the beginning, you're excited, this period of growth, and then we always reach every single time. This, it's like that glass ceiling, or the, it's that moment before you're about to have a breakthrough. And there's that period of frustration. And I always laugh when people hit it because when they break through the other side, it's like, this is, this is all the, this is all the new area, right? So over an eight week period, where we start is I, I help people drop out of their head into their heart. I need them to get authentic when they're, when they're working. That is the best feeling ever. And then once they start doing that, I want to see themselves exp- uh, be able to express themselves. Um, in video, Facebook lives, on stage, way better. Like being able to feel free to turn up as who they are. Then in those eight weeks, I build a framework for them. Some people, you know, some people are right brain, some are left. Um, I build a framework which makes them feel safe and they kind of know what they're doing step step by step. And then by week eight, where we get to is that they're embodying what they're talking about. And when you're embodying it, you become the authority. Does that make sense? It does make a whole lot of sense. So who, who is your sort of target audience for this eight week course? Who needs um, this, this course? Man, do you know what? I have everything from lawyers to clairvoyance and psychics to people in multi uh, network marketing to all sorts of coaches. So I mean, anybody, I, anybody that, has an opportunity to speak to an audience yes and yeah. you know has a way to present themselves absolutely yeah, sure. by, by week two we're creating video content that they are then using in their business for their business so there's a group of a closed facebook group they upload constantly videos i'm critiquing it getting them to do it again by mm-hmm. week two they're using those videos and then normally driving them to somewhere it might be their first workshop it might be um, you know, doing a video for their website. I, I like to kind of drive them towards a goal. Absolutely. You know, I like, um, you know, doing videos where, you know, it's like a magician. It's like a show and tell to actually help people by actually helping them. I've been speaking to you for 20 minutes. Are you comfortable to give us an open critic of what I can improve or what can be done better live and, um, you know, so that people that were watching this can actually see and go back and say, you know what, this is how it's supposed to be done. This is where it's um, supposed to be better, et cetera, et cetera. 
and don't hold back. Sure. So let's just pretend we're filming right now. Okay, I want you to introduce your show again. Ready? I'll go one, two, three, action, and then you introduce your show again. Is that okay? Absolutely. Great. Okay. okay. One, two, three, and action. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought you the presentation. Okay, stop. Go back and start again. This time, talk, talk to me. Tell me, just tell me right now who, when did you move to Melbourne? I moved to Melbourne six years ago. Six years ago. Where from? I'm from Zimbabwe originally. Nice. Really? And your, so your family came here or was it just you? No, it was just me. But just nice. a backpack full of hopes and dreams. Nice. And how's that worked out for you? Fantastic. You're on my show today, sir. Nice. Now I want you to go back, start your show in this space. Okay. So is it, and I know what you're going to... Oh, here we go. There's a thing called indicating, right? Mm-hmm. And indicating is applying layers over top of ourselves because we want to be, we're trying to be the image of what we think the audience wants to see. So when you start your show, you pick up a few notches. Now, you don't need to act excited because you genuinely seem excited and charming. So it's like if someone, I had this guy teaching last year and he, man, we, were, we were recording and he was really starting to, uh, to annoy me. And I was going, what are you doing? What are you doing? And he's like, oh, I want to come across as trustworthy. And I just, it was, man, it was, it was a beautiful moment because I mean, you are the most trustworthy pe person out of this whole workshop. If you found a dollar, you would go and look for that owner. You just need to be. The only person who needs to act trustworthy is the person who's not trustworthy. The only person who needs to act excited is the person who's really not that excited. The only person who needs to, who needs to pretend that they care is the person who doesn't actually care. All you have to do is be you. And this is why I love what I teach is because the cream rises to the top. The good people with the good intentions actually just have to be themselves, lay nothing else on top, and they rise to the top. Do you know what I mean? So when you started your show, you asked me to be straight to the point. And anyone who's been to my workshop, they will understand I get right down to the bottom, uh, right into the thick of it really fast. Is that your energy changed from this charming man to this caricature. And your, your caricature is your fantasy of what a TV presenter or what a show presenter should look like. But when you are just you, when I was talking to you about when you moved to Melbourne and, and from Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe, everything, yeah. I started to feel you. See the difference? I was talking to a real man or a real person, and I start to build this relationship with you of trust, and I start to care for you. Whereas before it was the act or your fantasy, and I didn't. I, it was just like an interview. It was like, I was, I'm, you know, the, 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 you're two people trying to find each other. Do you know what I mean? You're up here and I'm down here and I'm trying to come up and, you, and it's like, oh, <laughs> oh, where's the connection? Right. But, but I know I can see who you really are. And when you bring yourself, when you allow that to be, man, it's so much more engaging. Absolutely. Well, now we know you're a man about town and a man that knows what it is all about that you teach. Now, how can people get a, a hold of you? And thank you so much by that, for that, by the way. I know you would have. <laughs> are, you, are you okay with me telling you that? I know it's, it's I, I know you, you're the one who started it, you asked for it. But are you okay with that? Because it is, I want you to know that, it, that you, you don't need to add anything. You, you are this charming, amazing, brave man who's opening this up for this interview for me, and I really appreciate it. it it's, it's humbling to always do these. But if you want to walk away and asking that question, that's all, that's all I'd say is just, man, drop the fantasy, the act, and, and who this person is. Absolutely. Absolutely. It. Absolutely. That is so much value. Um, in as much as we could have been talking all about... 
um, you know, how to do this. But if people don't actually see it in action and see you actually mm. working and practicing your craft, mm. it, it doesn't make sense. So I really do think that if anybody's watching this right now, um, obviously, if you've got any questions or if you want a, a private consultation, I think Andrew would be uh, at liberty to tell us how best, um, you know, we can be in touch with him or how best people can join your eight week course. Mm. Do you know? Do you know what the? If I'll, I'll, I'm going to answer that question. I'll answer that question too. But when you change personality or change energy, it's also exhausting. Okay. Do you know what I mean? It's also you're also using energy you don't need to use. And on those days where you're having, let's face it, bro. I don't know about you, but I have some pretty shit days. And where you know, it's like life's giving me a kick in the butt, and I don't want to get. If I have to get on a video and then pretend to be really happy and excited, man, I just can't do it. Like, there's nothing behind my eyes. But if I just continue just to step into Andrew, it's like, you know what? I don't have to change much. This is just the way I am right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And especially if you're going to be doing a lot of these videos or if you're going to be talking to different people, some people do bring in their own energy. So you don't need to buy into that energy. Is that what you're saying? And then, yeah, man. Absolutely. You know, yeah. And then, you know, suck that and own that as if it's your own. So yeah. absolutely. I need to answer your question. What was the question again? <laughs> what was the question again? It was about... that's, all right. that's all right, Andrew. Um, I was just asking, um, you know, how is it that people can get a hold of you or how can people jump onto the eight-week course? Man, there's, there's, there's a couple of ways. One is jump into my, I have a very safe, um, non-judgmental and a hell of a lot of fun group called The Heart of Presenting. Um, that's a nice place to play or dip your toes in. Uh, I have a website, andrewegleton.com. And on that, I, will sh uh, I have my online course and I have my, my next tour coming up. So Australia and New Zealand um, and a part of Asia starts in March. Mm. Absolutely. So all that's on andrewegleton.com. That's the best place to start. Absolutely. Now, if you're watching this show right now, you might be having a clue as to maybe where you fall short in terms of presenting because apparently presenting is actually a doing. Um, and even more than that is actually a feeling the way you feel, um, you know, like what he explained and showed um, with the character that I stuck the show with that you don't have to add anything. Um, you don't have to be somebody you're not it does exhaust you um, as a person. So your videos will not come out as authentic. So what he does is show people how to get into that feeling and actually recognize what it actually feels like. And I did feel a little bit of that when I was talking about, you know, my journey and coming into Melbourne. So, you know, it is, yeah. um, it is, it is quite profound, the work that he does. And um, obviously I'll be putting in the links um, at the bottom of how you can jump onto the eight week course. And also if you're watching this on the Abbott network, you just want to jump onto Andrew's um, uh, profile. He's just created one and see what else he's doing with his tribe and his groups, um, you know, over there. Now, obviously we're starting a new year here, Andrew, and people are, you know, working around their marketing strategies and plans and what to do for the rest of 2018. Um, and some people haven't really, you know, caught up with their new year's resolutions yet. Mm -hmm. So this might be an opportunity to maybe impart some wise words, um, you know, that might put somebody on the straight and narrow, um, as to how they can be do and have, um, you know, exciting and authentic videos or presentations that their audience can actually resonate with. Okay. I'll leave, I'll, I'll leave you with a couple of little, um, things that they can start implementing straight into their business. Yeah. Why? One is, one is um, I, I just know when you were talking about your stuff before, it wasn't, you were actually connected to yourself, didn't you? That's what the feeling is, you were connected to yourself. Do you know, do you know what I mean? There was, when you we were doing that little exercise before, you were just, you just felt like you. The point is that you are enough, that you have to trust that you are enough when you get on, on video. It does take practice. But here would be my first big thing that this is my major learning in the, the last while is it is so damn good to fail. Failing is your success just as much as your success is your success. And I've le I learn, I have a reputation now for failing fast and it's okay to fail. Come back, regroup yourself and go, okay, that didn't work. I gave it a hundred percent though. So what now can I adjust to make this work? 
it, you can't go forward. You can't have the positive without the negative. You can't help have the success without the failure. The other one is too, is when you get on stage or on video, there is this tendency for people, these are the main fears. I'm going to forget what I'm talking about. I start to ramble. And this is built around the fear of silence in space. You don't need to fill all the spaces. It's okay for silence. When two people are speaking in a restaurant or when two people are having a chat, it's okay to have silence. So this takes away the pressure of having to fill all the gaps with your ums and ahs and, and the expectation that you need to be speaking. So if you, do, if you do this, when choosing your sentences and your words, in your brain first, choose the next right word to form the sentence that you want to form to then give your audience. Don't let your mouth lead the way. This is what we do. This is when you're on stage or on camera and you're like, and your, your brain's going, I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. This isn't why I even got on the video. Where, where are we going? Like, I'm completely lost and my mouth is still going and I can see there's blank faces everywhere. You know what I mean? This is our biggest fear. Or people go, I, I, don't know, I always feel I'm going to forget what I'm talking about on stage. This is, and I go, well, could you talk about yourself for one hour? Yeah, easy. Okay. So then how come... And then you get them to talk about themselves on video and they go, oh, I don't know what to say. It's like, wow, this is what the camera does, right? So allow there to be space. Just choose the next right word. Choose your sentence. You, also, we're, we're entrepreneurs and business people. We're not TV presenters. We don't need to barrel the camera. We can look off and go, yeah. So as I was saying, space is okay. Just choose the next right word in your head, put it into a sentence, and then offer your audience that soundbite. And it allows you to stop, and it takes all the stress away. It takes all the stress away from yourself. All of a sudden that anxiety goes because you can't forget what you're going to say. And even if you do, you can just stop and kind of go, do you know what, I forgot what I was about to say. And smile, that's okay. The audience are okay with that. It's only your awkwardness that makes the audience awkward. If you're okay with it, the audience is okay with it. Hmm. Does that make sense? That, that is like the, one, the tip that I give away in workshops that literally everybody is their takeaway. It's like, oh my God, that was the, that was the takeaway. Absolutely, absolutely. So, I, yeah, and, you, you are, you're not wrong by that because I am... Um, I also realize every time I'm speaking, I really need to, yeah, fill in the space and also keep whatever momentum or conversation going. And you're absolutely right. People did not come around to, um, you know, yeah, to be bombarded with, you know, meaningless words. They're here to, to learn something new from you. So if you can rest, regather yourself and actually put out the, um, you know, effective words that people need to hear, you actually make, you yeah. know, more for content. More value. <laughs> More value. Yeah. Yeah. This, yeah, this brings me like, as, as key points. If you're going to do a video, choose your key points. I don't know, bullet point them if you want to on the screen or on the wall, whatever. Just have three bullet points. I'm going to give you three points today on what it's like or, or how to be a better presenter. One, let the brain lead the way and the mouth will follow. Let me give you an example. And give you the example. And then I would just let you sit on that. Number two, do you know what I mean? I'm giving the viewer space to either write that down or to acknowledge that and go, okay, I've got that. Now what's next? Do you know what I mean? If I just talk all the way through with no stops and then number two and then number three, they're kind of like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I got to the end and I actually don't even know what he said. I, I think he said mouth and, and head or brain somewhere. <laughs> it's just effective communication, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. I know with all your value, we could go on and on, but it's one of those things, um, you know, good things have to come to an end. Um, so I'm going to be putting in all the links, um, you know, to your programs and whatever the ones you might give me later on so that people can get a hold of you and learn more. Because I mean, obviously, as you can now tell, it is really no secret that 
if you're using video or if you're presenting, you are quite closer to your audience than, you know, any uh, form of communication that's out there. And it's certainly no longer a tactic that you need to take lightly. And um, I mean, I'm a SEO expert myself and I actually know that YouTube is now the second largest search engine. So that actually tells you the, the effect and the power of, um, you know, video in, in our own community right there. So Andrew, I can't thank you enough for your time and your value and especially the one-on-one -on -one that you actually gave me, um, you know, in front of the audience to actually um, <laughs> you know, correct my uh, own presentation skills so that we can actually provide value. And I really, really respect you for that, man. Thank you so much. Mate, thank you for, for, for having me. And also thank you for creating a, a nice uh, tool, the website that people can go to and, and, and find coaches and other resources, man. It, it's really cool. It's nice to see. Absolutely. Thank you for that compliment. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you.